The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Earnest Speaking Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest EJ Christian, coming to you on a late Sunday night here in South Florida. It's actually really chilly tonight. Beautiful night here. South Florida, so drop actually in your podcast feeds on Monday morning. Uh, it is actually technically January uh, is it 5th of 4th. It's 5th, yeah, January 5th, 2020, 2020. It is technically the second podcast of 2020. I did a wild card preview pod uh, with, of course, Kyle Nash through the game, as well as my uh, old friend of the pod, Boston Jack, um, on Thursday. Um, so that was the first first podcast of the of the of the new year, first podcast of the of the decade. So this is the first solo pod of uh, um, twenty twenty, and so I can do my proper New Year's, you know, my, my proper Happy New Year, New Year, New New Me, whatever you want to call it, New Decade, maybe Old Me. I feel old these days. Um, so how are you guys doing? Uh, first off. Uh, hope, hope, we had, hope, hope you have, guys have had a good f- start to the new year. I've had a pr- pretty positive start. I'm, I won't lie. I've been uh, feeling good about the year so far. I, I've actually had a positive outlook on how I think how I think things may or should go in the uh, coming, um, of course, month, days, months, and in, in years. A lot of things I'm looking forward to. Of course, I'm turning 40 uh, this May. Uh, so that's definitely another uh, milestone on the horizon. I, in fact, I'm so, as I said on the uh, a previous episode a couple weeks ago, I'm um, celebrating that the week after that, um, May 8th, by see Metallica in concert, um, who are coming to Daytona Beach, which is about three hours from where I'm at now, um, my favorite band in the entire world, uh, so this should be a good time. Um, so there's a lot, of good, a lot of cool things I'm looking forward to doing in 2020, um, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to take everything in positive, try to take everything, you know, 2019, I, like I said, I've, I've admitted, I've confessed, i said on social media that 2019 was a letdown year for me personally. This is a disappointing year. Um, a lot of goals I had in mind I didn't get accomplished. There were some sh- personal struggles with me. Um, you know, obviously with you know with with mental health and whatnot, and you know challenges as, as a parent, as a husband. Um, but we are plowing through that stuff. We're actually going through that. We're going to make sure we, you know, for emotion always uh, here in my household. Uh, we're, we're, you know, I've always been a very positive person. Um, obviously, as you add more responsibilities to uh, to your life, it becomes harder to see the light in the tunnel. Sometimes, when you're always involved, when you're always in the muck, in the shit, if you call that, you know. And when you when you have a family, you you you, you know you're responsible for, you know, your your husband, your father. You have two young kids who who, de- who depend on you with their very lives. Um, you, you sometimes sometimes you have to kind of forego your your uh, priorities or, or things that, that you might want to do. Um, and I, I and like I said, it, it, it's been hard at times to adjust to that. Um, but we're gonna, you know, I I think for the most part I've been able to, you know, go through that and be able to learn from it from from experience. I I always look at things as as a, a experience as a learning learning curve. Um, I'm not one that's gonna give up on things. I, I'm always looking, looking at ways to fix it. I'm 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 a, I'm a fixer by nature. <laughs> you know, I I'm just somebody who uh, I see a problem, I want to fix it. You know, and I want, and I, I always felt for years too that, and I, I told my wife this, you know, quite a few times in, in the past that I've always felt that the more struggles we've had, you know, whether whether it's a couple, whether it's finances, whether it, whatever it may be, that I always felt most of the time it always draws together, and it, and, it, and it has in some ways, in some ways, in some ways, it's, it's, it's hurt recently because there's a lot more challenges. But we're, we're gonna we enter 2020. What a positive outlook on life. I do, especially my family does, and hopefully we do that. Um, as for New Year's, what did I do? Well, I, pretty much everything, same thing I've done every year. I don't really care about New Year's. Uh, growing up, I, I used to celebrate New Year's. You know, New Year's Eve, go out when I was a kid, when I was an adult, I was single, no kids, no responsibilities. I was able to just, you know, go out to different parties and drink and have a good time and, you know, ring in the New Year and, and, and be... be Live the live the world, live live life joyfully and as free as you can and free as you will. Um, I have to celebrate New Year's really in that way in uh, probably eight or nine years. Um, 
have to remember it was, it was 2011, I think, or 2012. I, I can't remember. It, 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 I, was, I was already married. Uh, I think it was 2012. It was, it was 2011 going 2012. I believe this is the year we got pregnant with Eli. But before we got pregnant, of course, um, we had a block party with our, my, my best friend, his wife, and went to, went to their friend's block party in, in Miami. It actually was a good time, a really good time. And that's the last time I remember celebrating New Year's. Otherwise, otherwise, in the past, my wife and I were always to stay home, <laughs> you know, drink cran cranberry juice and watch some movies. That's all we did. This year, honestly, New Year's for us, well, I, I didn't make it to New Year's. I, I didn't make it to midnight. <laughs> um, we had plans of going to a party, a, a, little, a party for a little, like an hour just to show up to do something different. That never happened. Um, so I told my wife she can go to the party if she wanted to. And that was the plan, and then that didn't happen either because our kids were a bit off, you know, a bit, you know, difficult that day. To the point that by the time we were able to settle down my little one, you know, my, my two-year-old Logan, by the time we were able to settle him down, uh, it was already 10 o'clock at night, and we were exhausted. And in fact, I was so exhausted I passed out, then it became midnight. Um, it was so weird because by 11 o'clock, I was, I was out like a light. And then all of a sudden, I get tapped my shoulder, and it's my wife saying, honey, hey, babe, babe, honey, happy new year. I'm like, huh? I was like, I was like so startled. I, I, I couldn't even, I didn't know what was going on. I was like so out of it, and, and I was like, oh shoot, it's twelve, it's twelve o'clock. It's the new year, it's a new decade, and and here I am sleeping on it. But you know, even, even when I, in the last couple of years, I said, you know, I don't go out much for New Year's or at all anymore for New Year's. I we would still wake, stay awake, and still watch. Um, and by the way, I haven't watched the ball drop since Dick Clark died. I can't, it's not the same for me to watch the New Year's uh, t on TV when Dick Clark's not around anymore. So I have this, we just. Do own thing, clock. We would follow on clock and we we'll watch TV, whatever. Um, and this year, I didn't do that it's again. So you know, it was just weird. You know, she's tapping me on the shoulder, saying "Happy New Year," and I'm half, I'm like half asleep. You know, it was it was such a such a, a I don't say it's a letdown, but it just it it just it reflects on what life is now today. It, it just it does reflect on what how life is. Um, and I feel like you know what I've been doing a lot lately too, especially is that I feel like in the last like few weeks. And especially the last couple of days since you know this new this new you know you know new decade and new date new years as as approach and change, I find myself looking back on things, looking back on my life. You know, you know, I'm, I say I'm turning forty in a few months. You know, what was my life before I got married, before I had kids, and I'm getting further and further away from that. Like I've been with my, with my wife, we've been married. You know, this year will be nine years. This April will be nine years. Would be, this year, you know, July would be 14 years being together, and I don't remember a life before Lauren and before my two kids, Eli and Logan. Like, it, it, and, and we're moving further, and I'm moving further and further away from that old life of mine. And I find myself just kind of curious: what was my life before them? Um, and I'm not saying that because I, I miss it. You know, I love my life as it is. I love being married to my wife. I, she, she's loved my life. I love her to death. Um, I, I love my kids. I, I, I would do anything for my kids. Um, I love my kids. They're, they're the best. They, they, they would make me sane, make me whole, even though they drive me crazy sometimes. sometimes. But it's just sometimes you go back through, you know, okay, so this is my life now, but what was life like before I had, before I, this, this next phase? And it's funny, like, I used to always make fun of people who had midlife crisis, you know, People hit the forties and maybe in the fifties, they go through like a, a midlife crisis where they kind of revert back to what they once thought was cool or what they thought would, would thought, think would be cool at the time. You know, going back to things they used to do, old habits that they don't haven't done in so long. And I, I used to make fun of that, you know, for a long time. Now, you know, here I am now looking back on my life. You know, back when I was twenty five, twenty four, twenty three, before I got with my wife, and back then I was in a band. We were doing shows a lot. We travel a lot to the state of Florida, uh, do shows everywhere, everywhere. You know, great shows. We, 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 you know, I, w I was single. I was able, I was dating a lot of women at the time. I was, now, granted, I wasn't, I wasn't a whore, so it's not go for that. But I, w I was, you know, I was, I, you know, I was a singular, a single man. I was, I was able, I was doing the things a single man does, you know. Um, and I was just living life. You know, I was able to eat when I wanted to. I was able to sleep when I wanted to. I was able to, you know, do whatever I wanted without without any responsibility. And it's so weird now that I have now I have structure, you know. Now, granted, even when I was single, I was still pretty conservative about, about lifestyles. I was not into drugs, you know. I drank very little, um, you know. The only time I smoked any sort of like, you know, 
so working with drugs was like you know my band members you know they smoke weed here once in a while I probably get a hit or two but I never bought never bought drugs in my life ever so I've, I've always been a, I've always been relatively a good boy even when I was before I became you know you know married and, and and with kids so I was always a relatively conservative guy by nature but I think now I'm going through a little bit I, I think right now I'm going through a little bit of a midlife crisis it's weird it's really fucking weird um so and I, you know like to to the point for example now what things I you should do back in the day I want to do now. Well, I've started to get the itch of playing music again. Now, I'm not saying I want to play in a band or I want to play in, in, in an active band because I don't have time for that right now. I barely have time to do this podcast as it is. And that's, and that's my number one priority outside of my actual priorities, my, my, my personal priorities is this podcast and doing the media and then doing my wrestling podcast. You know, that's, that, that's the number one priority. But I have the itch as of late to start playing music again. You know, I also have the itch to start seeing my friends again. One one of the things I've I've started, I, I one of the commitments I've made to myself um, in the new year is to make time for my friends, my closest friends, the ones I haven't seen in a long time, my best friends. Who you know, we all have the same lifestyle for the record. We're all you know, my all married. We have you know, some of us have children. You know, and it, it's one of those things where you know, life happens. But I'm trying to make the time for people I haven't made time for in a long time in the last couple of years because of life. Um, I think I'm going through a midlife crisis, though. Like, I'm starting to miss certain things on, of yesteryear. The freedom to do things. I, I told my wife recently I want to start traveling again. I want to start doing, going to concerts like I used to back in the day. You know, I want to be able to do, you know, certain things. But, I'll, but at the same time, you still want to keep the structure within your parameters of your own home. You want to continue to build financially. You want to, you want to, to, to set goals for your family and, and continue to do things with your family. It's one of those give and take things. It's it's tough, you know. Again, I used to make fun of people who went through this stuff, been like crises, and now here I am, you know, you know, contemplating my life now, approaching forty, and the next ten years of my life. Was it, was it going to be? Was it going to look like? Well, how, how does the next five years for me, Ernest Christian, look like? You know, will this podcast exist? Will I be doing my job I'm at, I'm at now? Will I be, you know, you know, when I still have my, when I still be married? Obviously, I mean, hope, hope, hope. I pray to God I will be. I mean, we, we, there's, no, there's no there's no signs of us getting divorced, but you know, you never know. Anything, you know, anything can happen. So, just one of those things where, ah, oh, man, gosh, I mean, we, you know, this is probably the most open podcast I think I've done in quite a while like this. Um, yes, I am going through a bit of a midlife crisis. I can't help it. It's just crazy. It's it's really, 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 really crazy. So, NFL Wildcard Weekend is now in the rearview mirror. Um, we now know the four teams that will advance to, to divisional weekend. Um, winners this weekend, of course, uh, the Houston Texans, the, ten the, the Tennessee Titans, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Seattle Seahawks. Um, th first off, three road teams win this weekend. And very impressive. Also, two overtime games. Um, Bills Texans was very entertaining, obviously. Had a good time watching that one. Um, and I got to tell you, Bill O'Brien, Texas head coach, it's amazing still head coach. Then again, the, the team was a pleasant every year because of despite his despite his lack of, lack of uh, I guess coaching, when to call it. He tried every which way to get Buffalo game late. Now, granted, Houston was down big in the game, down 16 points in the fourth quarter, and they made a uh, second half rather, and they, and they made a comeback and and uh, won the game in overtime. Um, and the fact that Deshaun Watson has to actually go has 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 to survive through his should I say ineptitude. It's a testament to how good Deshaun Watson really is. Because Bill O'Brien tried every way to get the game, to get the Bills a game late. Um, and again, you know, look, the Texans won the game. You got to be happy if you're a Texans fan. But they're also so untrustworthy. You know, I, I actually did pick the Bills win the game because I just didn't trust the Texans. And they kind of stumbled late in the year into the playoffs. They won some important games, yes. but They won division, yes, AFC South. But they're so... Like, I feel like this should be better than the, better than, than they really are. This should, this should be at least a twelve win team. You know, Deshaun Watson is a top five quarterback in the league. You know, they got a top three receiver in the league. You know, um, they got a really good roster. JJ Watt's still really good when he's when he's healthy. Um, but it's so they're just so untrustworthy. You know, and a lot of it is due to coaching. You know, uh, but they're going to be going to uh, um, to Kansas City next week. Now, what's funny is that funny enough they actually beat Kansas City this year again. Part of the uh, ebbs and flows. Part of the you know. Jekyll and Hyde of the Texans, they actually beat Kansas City in Kansas City early in the year. Um, but I don't expect them to win that game. Honestly. I, the Kansas City Chiefs right now are a lot better and more, more cohesive now than they were in October when, they, when that game was played. Um, as for the Bills, uh, Josh Allen, I you know, Josh Allen, you know, I, I do like him. Um, and I, I truly believe that if he could be more efficient in the football, you know, 
I think he can be an elite quarterback because his legs help him a lot. He has the body type. You know, he's not terrible, but he's not efficient. Like, he reminds me of Eli. He, he's kind of like a mixture of John Elway and Eli Manning. Like, when he's really, really good, reminds you of John Elway because of the mobility. But when he's, like, sloppy with the ball, with the football and inefficient sometimes, he, he looks like bad Eli Manning. You know, he just has to be more efficient. I thought the Bills had a game one, but they played scared in the end. And that's really that's really on Sean McDermott, the head coach, who's a really good coach. Definitely the coach of your conversation. Um, but, again, they, I, I thought they played scared. Um, so, there's that. Um, for, for the Bills, but you know, one, one thing about some of the Bills, though, the, 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 they're definitely on the way up. How about two playoff appearances in three years? Very impressive. So, there's that. Um, the other game on Saturday, of course, Titans and, pa- and the Pats. Um, the upset happened. Titans win the game. I was, I initially picked the Titans to win the game, and then I kind of sort of backpedaled on Thursday in the podcast and said that I felt comfortable with everybody picking the Titans to win the game. So I kind of went the other way last minute and, and said the Patriots will find, find one more way to. You know, f- you know, f- the fighting champion thing. They'll find a way to win this game. Then they'll lose the week after in uh, in in uh, Kansas City. You know, it's a shame that the post game narrative right now is solely focused on the Patriots and their future. So as a result, we'll get the Tennessee Titans some love first. Okay, we'll do that here in this podcast. Uh, Derrick Henry's a monster. Derrick Henry on his birthday, twenty sixth birthday, dominated that game. Um, and and I said that if 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 Derrick Henry gets opportunities to run the ball on a pass defense, it opens everything Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill wasn't great in the game, but he was good enough, you know, and he's proving what he can do and what he can accomplish when you give him a adequate or an or operable offensive line in front of him. Are you listening, Miami Dolphins and Dolphin fans? When Ryan Tannehill has to have a line to throw to throw against or throw with, he can do good things. You know? And I, I gotta tell you, I like I'm not gonna pick him to win the game next week, obviously. Like Baltimore's obviously the favorite. But I gotta tell you, this could be a dangerous spot for Baltimore going forward, because Tennessee is a very balanced team, good enough, and now they're playing house money. I'm not saying again. I'll play Baltimore in the game, but I think this game might be sneakily competitive. I really, I really believe that. Um, as for the Patriots, I was in there just about Tom Brady, his future. Is this the end of the dynasty? Um, lots of questions. My opinion here is that I think Tom Brady will be back for one more year. Because, the, simply for one reason, the Pats don't have another option right now. They don't have a backup plan like, they, like the, the Packers had with Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers or the Niners had with Joe Montana to, to Steve Young. They had that option a couple years ago. His name was Jimmy Garoppolo, who's on San Francisco. Um, there's no, really no requisite or no, you know, format for this, what's happening with the Patriots. The fact they've won two more Super Bowls Post Garoppolo is an anomaly in itself. This whole thing is an anomaly all anomalies. And you in the past said to be pissed the fact that Garoppolo's gone, but it was gonna cost a lot of money to keep him on the roster. And Tom Brady was still giving the, the re- desired results even with the situation. So you can't be mad at the Pats fan about where you're at now. But unfortunately what we what we were saying for years is that by you know Picking Brady for a couple more years at, in his in his late thirties, early forties, basically you're kicking the ball down the road a little more. At some point, this day will come. Now, I think the better option for the Patriots is, is find a way to lock in Tom Brady for another year, maybe two years, but I say for a year from now, they have to draft the quarterback. Um, they they, they got to draft the quarterback. Um, going forward, they have to because they need somebody. They need an option going forward. Um, look, Tom Brady is no longer elite, but he's still pretty damn good. The guy had 24 touchdowns, seven picks this year, 4,000 plus yards. What a sh- what shit offensive playmakers. And that says a lot about Tom Brady, how good he is still. Now, he's not great anymore because obviously the deterioration has been there. And it's been there for a couple of years, actually, if you pay attention. Uh, yeah, you look at the rings and all that. But if you look at his actual individual play, the deterioration has been pretty obvious. His long ball's been gone. Um, he, he, he can occasionally hit, hit uh, you know, throw a, a, a dart to a receiver, but that's on occasion. Now, the future of the Patriots really, to me, I think the wild card in all this is the offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels. Because him and Brady have a, a you know, they have a, a, a synergy together. You know, they worked well together for, for a long time. And if McDaniels decides to go for another job outside New England, and we all assume that McDaniels would be the heir apparent to Bill Belichick, but there's rumors now about McDonald's taking meetings now with other teams this week and all that. So it's how that goes. I think McDonald's is the wild card the whole thing. So we'll see how that, p- that plays out. 
All right, so today's game was today's games was a uh, uh, Saints and Vikings. Kirk Cousins finally showed up in a meaningful game. Saints win the uh, Vikings win the, win the upset. I, I look, I thought the Saints would win this game to blow out. I, I'm I'm happy for the results. Also, my wife would kill me because my wife loves the loves the Saints, loves Drew Brees. But you know, <laughs> I was hoping for the Vikings win the game because I'm not a Saints fan. I don't. I'm not really a big. You know, I'm not really a fan of their fans personally. Um, they complain too damn much. Although they've gotten screwed a couple times, to some degree. Um, they got kind of screwed today too, to some degree. But you know, again, you're the Saints. You're 13 three. Get the job done. Um, Kirk Cousins finally showed up in a game in a game that's meaningful. You know, and I've, and I've been saying for all, for all year long, even last year, he doesn't need to be great with the Vikings. Just be good. This is a top three roster in all of football. If you're, if you're even just decent and good, you can win games. And, and he was decent today. And he makes some big time throws in overtime. Um, Dalvin Cook was phenomenal. Florida State's own, of course. Florida State, FSU, maybe. Um, and but the Vikings, had to, you know, they try to get the way game get the game back to the Vikings. I'll get back to the Saints rather um, numerous times. Um, but the Saints couldn't capitalize. Drew Brees played okay. Um, he has a, a good good run in the second half of the game. Um, again, his future now up, up in uh, up in the air. We'll see um, what happens with uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Tyson Hill. Um, so you look at the, the Brady situation, but even Drew Brees' situation is, is, is uh, up in the air. I'm not even sure if he's a, if he's a free agent this year. I think, I think he's a free agent this year. I don't know. Um, so we'll see what happens in Minnesota. I'm going to go to San Francisco. That's going to be an intriguing game going forward. Um, the final game of the weekend, uh, of course, the Seahawks beat the Eagles. Um, I felt robbed here because look, I'm not an Eagle fan. Everybody knows that. But not having a game, and having Carson Wentz get hurt in the game and not come back, yeah, look, I, I'm glad to see us won the game. I'm actually moving for the, Russell Wilson, my favorite player in the NFL. Well, I actually won to win the Super Bowl again, just to kind of solidify him as the a, a, a top tier, all time quarterback. But you want to see them beat him with, you know, be, at relatively full strength, at least with the, with the quarterback. And the Eagles already were coming to the playoffs limping as it is, and unfortunately, Carson Wentz gets hurt with the concussion. Um, he's out for of the game. People are not saying, "Oh, well, we're great. Nick Foles should have been here." No, Carson Wentz got to the playoffs. It, it, it's a freak thing. Um, it is what it is, um, but yeah, Seattle wins that game. They go Green Bay now. I'd say that Green Bay Seattle game is gonna be pretty pretty good. Um, uh, I don't know that 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 could go either way because I don't think either team is really all that great. Um, I think both teams are, in my opinion, I've been saying all year long they're not really a Super Bowl contenders, in my opinion. But yet one of these two teams will, will be playing in the, in the NFC Championship game in two weeks. <laughs> so um, that's how much I know. Um, and yet, you know, I think. Seattle's not that good, but I think Russell Wilson's great. I think Green Bay is kind of eh, but Aaron Rodgers is still an elite quarterback. So there you go. Two teams that kind of, in my opinion, mirror each other to some, some degree. Um, to be honest with you, I, I, I'll i be totally honest with you. I, I think uh, the, the the safe bet here is the AFC might win the Super Bowl this year. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, it's, again, it was a very intriguing weekend. I enjoyed it. You had three road teams win and two OT, two overtime games. You know, I, you can't ask for more as a, as a football fan. So I've been catching up on TV a lot in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, with over the holidays. And one of the things I watched, and although I was behind, I, although I watched it about ten days after the fact, but I did see the Eddie Murphy appearance on SNL on Saturday Night Live uh, a few days ago, which I really enjoyed. Um, Eddie Murphy, of course, is, is my all-time favorite actor. Um, most of you guys don't know that. Um, I've been a diehard fan since 1984, 85. Um, my favorite movies are actually. Um, Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, Coming to America. Like, if, if I made you a top 10 of my favorite movies, um, his movies are probably, well, you probably see at least five movies that are, you know, in my top 10 that are Eddie Murphy related that he, or he, that he starred in. Um, Coming to America, Trading Days, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2. Um, I Even some of the movies that made him my, made my top 10, like Golden Child and which people, that movie got spanned a lot, but I, I actually enjoyed that movie quite a, quite a bit. But, you know, he came on SNL, first appearance on there. Actually, he came, well, he came on SNL actually a couple of years ago when I did the 40th anniversary uh, special back in 2014, 2015. I can't remember what year it was exactly. But it was, it was a little appearance, nothing really special on that. This was his first appearance actually doing skits and actually, you know, on there for an entire episode since 1984. Which, so it was a big deal. Um, and it was a very solid appearance considering the fact that to me, SNL is virtually unwatchable today. I, I haven't watched SNL on a regular in a quite a long time. In fact, the last time the last time I watched SNL, honestly, was that episode the the, the 40th anniversary special they did back in 2014, 15. Um, and you know, 
you know, Eddie, Eddie being on there, you better see a, sur- a surge of Eddie Murphy projects on the horizon, definitely. Um, Kermit's America 2 is in the works already. Um, I've heard there's a special on Netflix being planned out for him. So we're going to see another a, a renaissance of Eddie Murphy material. Now, I'm really curious how it's going to work out because Eddie Murphy's jokes in the 80s, his two big stand-ups, Raw and Delirious, that he did in, 80, in 83 and 80, 86, respectively, um, would be considered today controversial considering the PC... Um, Arrow right now, and he, he even he's admitted himself saying that some of the jokes that he said in, in 1983 or 86 would not fly today. And I and and you know honestly, based on the on the atmosphere of the world today, and then again the PC nature of the world, uh, yeah, yeah, it won't, it won't, it won't fly today. But I'm really curious to see how he's accepted today, um, because he's definitely on the Mount Rushmore of uh, comedians. Um, I, I I've, I've said for, for many years that Eddie Murphy is the best, the greatest uh, personality to come out of SNL. To, to me, it's not even close. Like people, people say Adam Sandler, but I say Eddie Murphy has a lot more diverse base. His movies a lot, a lot, have, have grown much better than, bigger than Adam Sandler's. Um, Sandler certainly is in the top, in the top two, three, two or three top all-time SNL guys, but Eddie is definitely the GOAT when it comes to that. Um, but I'm really curious to see how Eddie Murphy ad- adapts to today's world, 2019, 2020. You know, because this ain't 1983 anymore. This is not 1986. Uh, this is a different, different world uh, these days. Um, uh, so, but it's good to see him back on TV. He's still really funny. Um, his skits were really good in the show. Mr. Robinson Neighborhood, of course, is great. That but the, that skit was really, really good. Um, you know. You know the, the 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 one with buckwheat and you know he was singing the Beyonce song you know single lady just he was like he was like you know really really good it was really good stuff on there man I really enjoyed it but I'm really curious to see how how much lead she'll get in terms of the jokes and what he if he'll keep it semi clean if you will because uh, he's been a lot cleaner been more of a cleaner comedian even in the movies in the last twenty years. Um, has been very. He's always been a lot more uh, raunchy, and in his, his movies that he's done in the last twenty years have been a lot more on a lighter side. Dare say some people don't. I, I mean, I'm not really a, a big fan of, of his later work, honestly. Other than a, maybe 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 Night Professor is decent, but like I wasn't a fan of Daddy Daycare. Didn't care for uh, um, the other stuff he did on the, on the back end. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see how we adjust going forward. Um, we had, we had also had a, a big, uh, very. Uh, High-profile death this week. Uh, David Stern, former NBA commissioner, died at the age of 77 uh, due to a brain aneurysm. Um, David Stern, very—I don't even want to use controversial because when you when you when you run a league for 30 something years, it's not gonna be perfect. He he did a great job getting the league where, to where it was and is today. You gotta remember the NBA was on the, on tape delay um, in 1981. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were playing NBA championship games on tape delay. And I'm not saying David Stern is the only reason they became what they were, but David Stern was a large part of the fabric of why the NBA became internationally, you know, dominant. Um, you could argue basketball today is now the second biggest sport in the world beyond soccer. Um, you know, but again, you know, running late 30 years, you have warts. You know, it shouldn't define his legacy, more so tell a story. You know, obviously the Chris Paul trade that he nixed in 2011 gets a lot of uh, negative publicity and all that. Um, the way he handled the, you know, uh, in the mid two thousands, after the you know the mouse in the palace, and of course the, the the dress code that many people, especially in urban areas, did not really care for that. I actually agree with him on that personally. I um, mean, not a very popular popular uh, position in my in, you know with people I'm close to, but who who gives a shit? And this is my my opinion. Um, obviously having I, 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 I was, uh, somebody said three. I, I remember being two lockouts under his under his uh, administration. Somebody said three. I remember. I remember the third lockout, but definitely two. Um, one in ninety nine and one in uh, eleven. Um, but one of the things I like about David Stern was like what David, like David Stern was the fact that he's always been transparent to a, to a fault. Um, he always felt like a teacher or a principal. You know, uh, he he. But he always he he didn't bullshit you. Like I see interviews with him with with with, uh, with Jim Rome and other pe- other countless people, and he you know he would he 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 would take. He would call in shows. I mean, if he felt like his league was being bashed, whatever, or somebody was get, had an opinion, and some he would call in a show and, and express his his thoughts, and and and, he, and he'll, he'll do PR if he will, you know. And he was very very transparent in that way. I, I always respected that about David Stern. He was very transparent in that way when it came to his league. Um, 
Uh, one of the, one of the uh, conversations I will say I recommend is one of his last things he he did before he died a couple of years ago. Uh, a colleague, uh, I almost call him a colleague, but he was definitely a friend of a friend. Um, Nuno Damasio has a podcast. Nuno Damasio is a, is a former uh, writer, SI writer. Um, he wrote a book about Bill Parcells a couple of years ago, which has got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, positive um, feedback. He did a podcast with David Stern in his house for about two hours and I really enjoyed that it was David Stern very very honest and transparent and authentic um Dunia Demasio I can't remember the name of the podcast it's, 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 uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the podcast I unsubscribed to it a couple well, about a year ago because he hasn't really in anything on there but David Stern was very honest and I like that. It was it was done in, in Nuno's house. You can hear the the AC in the background, and it was you know and whatnot. And Stern just being very honest. And I, I always I've always admired him. You know, Adam Silver obviously is a more progressive one. David Stern was very progressive too, but David Stern also was someone that had to keep people things in line. And I, you can respect that. So again, recipes David Stern, and you know, prayers, thoughts, his prayers was to his family, his friends, and folks who were close to him. Um, definitely a a a. Uh, a, a a death being felt around the league, um, definitely um, definitely gonna, gonna miss him. Uh, he was again great for the league. We're not here, and as an NBA diehard, we're not here without David Stern, honestly. All right, final before I go, um, I also over the fall started watching The Office, Stay, staying with TV real quick and and things of that nature. Um, I had started watching The Office back in um, when did I start? September, October, but of course. With me, you know, binging in, in, in recent years has been a lot more challenging because of the fact that I'm into so many, sh- you know, watching sports and wrestling and all that. It gets in the way. Um, so I started running the fall and then I stopped. I, I watched the first season and I stopped. And, I, again, I have a hard time sticking with binges, you know. But recently I've been making headway, you know, with, with my new schedule change recently. My, now my wife has started binging with me, but then she went ahead and finished the show without me. Um, she's actually watching with me again. So we've been... We've been spending night, recent recent nights in the last week or so watching The Office, and um, I still scratch my head wondering how why it's been so long to watch the show. The show is genius. The writing is incredible. Um, you know, you had guys like Ricky Gervais involved in this, and Larry Wilmore and whatnot. Um, um, obviously, my favorite character in the show is Stanley. Um, I, I love the cast. I, I'm like Michael Scott to me is a moron. Um, the, probably the dumbest character in television history. Him and Dwight are neck and neck. Dumb as hell, and and I'll be honest. Sometimes it gets a little, bit, sometimes it gets really annoying. Um, I love the cast around them. I, I love Jim and Pam's story. Um, obviously, I'm only two two seasons in, so it's, it's a long way to go. Um, but I love Stanley. Uh, who is he has some of the meme? You know, I didn't realize a lot of those memes I was I was sharing with him on there was him on the office. Um, he's he has the most meme face you can ever ever imagine. Um, Kevin also is the same one, same thing. Um. Again, I'm I'm shocked that we don't watch the show. Um, everybody, in my family watches it. They loved it. I watched episodes here and there sporadically. Never got into it, but I'm, I'm actually dedicating now time to watching the show. I, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I have a, I have the rest of the year to watch it because it's going to be off Netflix 2021. Um, but again, uh, <laughs> Michael Scott, dumbest character on, on TV, definitely. Um, um, so yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm enjoying the show. It's really really a lot of fun to watch and. And all that. So that'll be it for tonight. Um, I have to go to sleep now. It's getting late. Got a work day tomorrow. A lot of a lot of things to do. So on Twitter at ejackson Seven, Ernst Speaking Podcast, Ernst Speaking Media, and Ernst Speaking Net. Um, until next time, stay up. God bless. And until next episode, later. Thank you.